Mix and Magic in the return match, the home and home at MSG. You were hoping the Knicks would go 3-0 on this one, man, but uh, hey, Magic clapped back in a big way. Led by Cole Anthony to start it off and closed by Terrence Ross to microwave. Knicks just could not get anything going offensively all night. No fluidity. Shots weren't falling. The Splash Brothers from Friday night were just ice cold from three. And defensively, they, they just weren't there, man. Got out hustle, got out muscle down the stretch. And that's all she wrote. 110 to 104. Knicks go down at home. Uh, listen, this is this is definitely a disappointing loss. I think that's the yeah. term, the appropriate term to use. It, it's it's a disappointing loss, you know, especially after the way that we played uh, against Orlando on the road, you know, um, and then coming back at home, our second home game after a, a you know a late game winning uh, game against the Celtics. Mm-hmm. Disappointing, man. Disappointing all around. Uh, all out struggle. Um, you know, the offense continued to shoot, you know, a bunch of threes. We just couldn't make threes today. Yeah. In terms of perspective, listen, you know, the Hawks lost to the Cavaliers. If we this is this is, you know, you're banking on human performance. Yeah. This is, you know, any given day. Right. This is not computerized. Right. Be, the Hawks lost to the Cavaliers. The Hornets beat the Nets. You know, the Suns smoked the Lakers and then they got smoked by 30 the next game against the Blazers. Mm-hmm. So I just want to put perspective on this. I have to put perspective. I'm on the 50 burger bandwagon. So how can I not put perspective on this disappointing loss? So, you know, it's early. And if you look around the NBA, you've seen some wacky losses and it's going to happen. I mean, yeah. in the 82 game season. Even the best of teams, the teams that win 60 games, you look at all around, you look at their loss column, they've had disappointing yeah. losses. I think, obviously, Julius Randle, 16 rebounds, 30 points from him. Derrick Rose, big night off the bench with 23. Couldn't really expect more from those guys, but I think it's everything in the middle that's disappointing. R.J. Barrett didn't have a good night. Mitchell Robinson, obviously, scared Knicks fans to death when he hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Double-double from him, a quiet one, 10 points, 10 rebounds. Evan Fournier, very quiet from him. Campbell Walker, very quiet from him. So it's the guys in between that that really didn't hold their weight. And we spoke about this going into this season, the difference maker. And one of the things that we were very um, looking forward to was that now in the offseason, you got those acquisitions that can help Julius Randle not have to do most of the legwork, right? Yeah. And tonight they didn't hold down the fort for him. So eventually Julius is going to go cold at some point in that game. And we saw that in spurts throughout the game, right? Quarter here, quarter there little piece of that quarter, a little piece of that quarter. And you can't go ahead and rely on him to solely keep the ship afloat anymore. You have too much talent on the team to even expect that from him. And again, he is a human like JD spoke to, and he's going to go cold. And that's just what it is. And it's about how do you combat that? And I think also he realized that his teammates were not having a good night. So you didn't see him pass the ball like he should have because it's like passing the ball to who? Nobody else is scoring tonight. I have to do all that work. And it's reverting back to old habits, that old hero ball mentality where last season he had to have that mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Because he really was the only one outside of some um, contributions from Derrick Rose and R.J. Barrett here and there. He was the only one really that was responsible for getting the points on the board and helping to secure wins. It was solely, not solely, prominent, predominantly rather on his back. Mm -hmm. And we kind of saw him revert to old habits. It's just going to go ahead and take everyone doing their part to kind of make sure that he doesn't revert back to that because you can see how easily he does. And overall, there was just a lack of continuity within the offense. You know, uh, Fournier, 3 from 11 from the field. RJ, 5 of 17. Julius himself, 8 of 24. You know, a, a lot of settling for, for one pass and, and shot, two pass and shot. There just wasn't too much fluidity going on with the offense. Once again, it was the second unit that came in and picked us up after the slow start. You know, Derrick Rose, outstanding, outstanding game. He was the best Nick tonight. Again, an efficient game for Rose, efficient as a shooter, efficient as a passer, getting the offense going. He was the best point guard on the on the on the floor, you know, between he and Kemba. Tibbs went to go close with him, as, as we saw. But again, it, it just wasn't uh it just wasn't enough help from especially Fournier and RJ, you know, your wings. You got eight of twenty-eight. 
shooting mm-hmm. from those guys and three for 14 from downtown. That's just not going to get it done. The overall, the, the shots just were not falling. The shots were not falling for us. Yeah. You know, again, there were some c- concerns defensively. You had Cole Anthony go off 21 first half points. He finished with a double double 29 and 19. He was flaming Kemba up, flaming the guards. That's not a good look. And then again, Terrence Ross. That was RJ's responsibility. That was Burks' responsibility. Neither one of them could check Terrence Ross. Yes, he is a microwave. He's capable of, of doing that. This is a guy that dropped 50 points once upon a time. So he's capable of getting it going, it, no, no matter who's guarding him. But either way, our wings just were not defending well tonight at all. Uh, you mentioned Mitch Ash, and again, another scary moment, thinking we almost lost Mitch again. Yeah. And, and you know, in Mitchell Robinson's absence, another area that was that hurt us was our lack of rim protection every time Mitch went out the game no Noel again tonight what's going on with him we have no idea but he's now far behind the eight ball with no preseason no training camp with a knee injury so we got to see what goes on with him but they went with Taj and 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 uh and Obi no Sims so you had no rim protection there and and each time Mitch went out Magic were able to take advantage of that Mitch, when, when Mitch came back in, J.D., after, after we thought we lost him to a, a potential knee injury, he came right back in, stripped the Magic three times, got an offensive rebound, got fouled. I mean, Mitch's defense, his, his paint protection was, uh, was certainly on display in, in his minutes. You know, I thought that was a bright spot in his loss. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, as soon as he went out, you know, the Magic understood, you know, the personnel that was out on the floor. Not only the Magic, it's going to be a theme throughout the season um, unless Noel can get back healthy and if he is inserted into some minutes at, in a backup role. This is what teams are going to do. Teams understand now. They, like, the Knicks are known around the NBA as a very good team. And so, you know, scouting reports are going to pay attention to, you know, the, the point guard position is a weak point at defense, so yeah. we have to attack that. But let's also look at Mitchell Robinson. Let's also look at the Knicks center rotation. As soon as Mitchell Robinson is out, teams are going to think this is our opportunity. And as you saw, you know, uh, uh, Mosley immediately was inserting those uh, guards that could get to the basket to make sure that, you know, this is our chance to make runs. Yeah. And Mitchell Robinson tonight was only one of three players that was a positive in the plus minus department. So that also goes to show you when he was out on the floor, you know, the Knicks were 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 playing well. And, you know, this also is going to test Tibbs. We talked about, you know, tonight it didn't work in terms of going with Obi and Randall. Um, what does this do, what does this do to Tibbs' confidence moving forward and using that combination? Because we all know Tibbs' emphasis is 48 minutes of rim protection, and yeah, that's why good. in the 82 game season you need everyone. I know you know fans doesn't don't think that Noel is very talented, and I get it. There's other players on the roster and in that rotation that are more offensively gifted than him, but he does offer a, a important ingredient. That, like I said, when the season started, because we don't have some of those perimeter players, defensive players that we lost, our rim protection is going to be key in nights like tonight where we, we're we just not hitting shots. Yeah. But as you said, Rose had it going, hit those back-to-back threes to keep us in the game. Um, but it, it just it just was a little bit too late. And then then he goes back to Fournier with, with four minutes left in the fourth. Fournier's ice cold. First shot he takes is a deep three, which, you know, to me was ill-advised. But that's one of the things, again, as we go through this season, Tibbs is going to have to manage. How do you manage that depth? Are you going to go Rose over Kemba? Good job. You just stick with Rose. Kemba, he's, Kemba's, you know, he, he doesn't have it right now. Are you going to go with Burks versus Fournier? You know, those, those questions are going to continue all season long. At what point do you go go to one guy or go back to the other Tonight, you know, my guy Burks didn't have it tonight. Didn't didn't really have it tonight. I would have rather seen Fournier come in a little bit early in the fourth, try to get back into a rhythm, back into a flow, but uh, just just wasn't meant to be tonight. How do you manage the depth, right? Because before last season, the conversation was, well, Tibbs can't manage what he doesn't have, right? Mm-hmm. Now you're on the other side of the spectrum. Now you have the depth, so how are you going to manage it? And I think, you know, going back to the previous point we were making, it, you got to figure out who is your closer. You got to figure out who you're most comfortable running the offense through. And look, that may not always be Derrick Rose. Sometimes it yeah. may not be Derrick Rose's night, but it has to be a, a, a just a clear thought process on Tibbs' side where it's like, okay, if it's not Rose tonight, if Randall's not going to be our primary scorer, if RJ's not going to do this, 
how do I adjust? Because at the end of the day, the players are going to run what the coach draws up for them, right? And that's not saying that Julius Randle does not have to be better at executing and passing that ball out. That is something I've been very critical of him in the past. He has a mentality that he always has this hero ball mentality, where it's, if I don't take the shot, nobody else is going to take the shot. Nobody else can take the shot. You got you got four other guys in the court with you, Julius. It doesn't always have to be you. RJ, you know, didn't have a great night tonight. He does yeah. this sometimes where he just kind of fades into the background and he'll, he'll quietly do things there, here and there. But I need more aggression from you, RJ. You can't just, you know, sulk into the background. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> has their individual things that they need to work on. But Tim is responsible for the whole collective unit. And he has to be better at managing the depth, managing the rotations, and most importantly, making the adjustments when they have to be made and not sticking with a mindset that you went in there with because the course of a game changes in the blink of an eye, and we saw that Magic. tonight. Look, Magic just, uh, they, they played harder, played tougher all night, and, and they came out victorious, man. I'm with you, though, J.D. Once I saw Terrence Ross hit that first shot in the fourth, I said, ah, here we go. I said, he, he's about to get started. Here, here we go. <laughs> and my man would not stop. The thing with um with Randall, it's you know it's a lot of ISO. The ball sticks. You can yeah. live and die by it when it's working and he's hitting the shots. You know, you know you don't realize it that it's not the best type of offense. You know, and then nice night tonight you really see it. I know he dropped what thirty, but you yeah. know very inefficient. The ball is sticking like crazy. And the thing that I don't get with Knicks fans is I don't get why you know people are excited. We got Kemba and Fournier and that Rose is here now, but then they complain about the defense. Like we knew this, we knew yeah, the perimeter yeah. defense was going to take a big step down. Yep. You know what I mean? You're going to improve offensively, but we knew the defense wasn't going to be as good. So point guards are going to hurt us on a consistent basis. I don't see that changing anytime soon with the point yeah. guards we have. You know, it's just you know. And then the last thing with RJ, I know a lot of people are killing him. I see it in the chat, but. I don't know. I guess I look at him differently because I never saw, like, a lot of Knicks fans, I feel like they they say, you know, they think he's going to be a superstar. I never saw him as that type, like a franchise changer, mm-hmm. just in my opinion, you know, even from the jump, you know, from Duke and when he first came to the league. I never saw him as, like, a franchise-changing superstar type player. Mm-hmm. I like him, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying trade him, but I just never had those expectations, so... No, that's why I feel like Nick fans get very frustrated with him when he has bad nights, you know. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we'll be all right, man. Just the, the one thing that's frustrating is just, you know, nights like this and with the East being way improved. Yeah. You know, Charlotte, that was the team that I really thought was going to take that big jump up this year, and they look really good. East, you know, East so is stacked up, man. Good. East, so these East are is tough looking good. Ones, man. Yeah. You got to get these, man. I'm at my point with Julius Randle where I kind of cringe when I see Point Randle. Mm -hmm. The first two years I gave it a pass because we didn't have any point guards, but now we have Kemba and D. Rose, and I still cringe when I see him bring the ball up court. I saw him steal two rebounds from Mitchell Robinson, so I'm like, okay, it's that kind of stat pattern night we're getting from Randle. He kept bulldozing into the – like he would drive and bulldoze into like, you know, the defenders and stuff. RJ was throwing out his rhythm. Fournier was throwing out his rhythm. Obi couldn't get his rhythm. And it's yeah. like, where was this energy against Atlanta? You know, and I, that game just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, even to this day. It's just He's like, going, going forward, do you, do you see, like, Randall just ever just stop with the Fisdale era tactics and just being a, a good basketball player? Well, Thank I mean, guys. thanks. Thanks, Val. Well, that's on this coach, you know. I'm with you. You know, you have two capable point guards. Let them handle the rock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let them handle the rock. You don't have to do it all. Yeah. And and that was yeah. one of my questions, J.D., going into this season. When, you know, when, when we're talking about all the questions, I said, look, Julius and his trust with his new teammates, with, with Kemba, with Fournier, you know that that adjustment he's gonna that chemistry has to be built. That adjust those adjustments have to be made. Yeah, and 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 you know it's it's gonna be tough because I know the fans are gonna look at Randall a lot and and deservedly so, uh, right? He's our best player, um, but I also think the coach has to help him a little bit. This is when the conversation starts of to become a championship contender. You need that guy that you can give the ball to where he can give you a bucket and at the very least can create a positive play if he doesn't you know, get the score. But if you're Thibodeau, you have to look at this roster and you just have to feel the game on a game-to-game basis. Not only that, but look, let's go back to, I believe it was the first game of the season that we won 
if you look against Boston, one of the things is that it really, if you look, Julius Randle wasn't doing what he did tonight. There was a lot of distribution of that ball. There was a lot of ball move. Everybody got involved in some capacity. Myas Kembo, who, you know, is going to take a little bit longer, I guess, to get, you know, into the swing of things, get that New York grit back. But the one thing that was something that we really enjoyed about that game was everybody did their part. Everybody had a nice stat line. It was 15 points here. It was 20 points here. It was 25 points here. This was not one of those games. This was a very lopsided game where Julius and Derek were on this side and the rest of the team was on this side and the, yeah. and the scale looked like this. So I understand the criticism of, of Julius Randle. And I agree with it. I just don't know if that criticism necessarily applies to the the way that this game kind of unfolded because there were not many of there were not other options for him to pass that yeah. ball to that he had confidence. In. You know, Julius had it going in the first half. He was cooking Carter, so it was kind of hard to say. Well, you know, dial it back, especially to your point, Ash, when a lot of these guys didn't have it going. And, and shout out First Lady of Sports. She sends a super chat because she also had a good point in that in the fourth quarter. Knicks couldn't beat that zone. You know, Magic went back to that zone in the fourth, and uh, we, we couldn't execute. So that's another thing, again, from, from Tibbs' perspective, when he talks about, you know, what they want to take away from this game and, and to learn from. They got to execute better out of the zone, you know, because they have the pieces to uh, to break it down, whether it's, you know, running it through the middle, through Julius, through RJ, or, you know, busting it from the outside with Rose's three-point shooting or Burks or Fournier, whoever's out there. They certainly have the personnel to get out there and do it. They just have to uh, execute it a little bit better. I got to be honest, I ain't even supposed to be on this phone tonight, yeah, it was but a bum I talked night. to the general manager earlier today, and I said, yo, I'm only going to call in tonight because it's Sunday and I'm supposed to do sermons on Sunday. Yeah. Well, I had to get woke up out my mattress and have my wife telling me, yo, we losing. I couldn't believe what was going on, so I had to go check the videos and see what's happening, you know what I'm saying, about this game. I don't even watch game, bump games, no nothing. I expect to wake up on a victory. This is a a bad taste in my foot, in, 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 inside my mouth tonight. I do not like this L. Maybe some of y'all are cool with it in, in, in the chat, in, in the orange and blue world. I'm not. This is a very important game. This is the type of game you need to win for later on in the season. You tie with somebody at the sixth seed, and you get pushed from the playoff spot into a playing spot. It's the difference between all the games that we are supposed to win. You know what I'm saying? This game is like a playoff matter when you're playing somebody in the regular season on a back-to-back -back night game. That reminds me of game four when we played the Bulls and they came back and we Charles Smith and they went back mm. to Chicago. We ain't come back. That's the type of feeling I got against Orlando Magic. We're supposed to smash these tight teams, but I'm not going to point no fingers at no players. I'm not going to do that like people doing in the chat. I'm not going to talk about no players. What I want to talk about tonight is the motivation. Where was the motor at the night? Where was somebody getting in their other teammates' face telling them they need to turn up, man? Where was the where was the starter kick? We needed a pension on that bench tonight, man. We need somebody to be a vocal leader on our team for nights when we come to perform. We do not show up, man. That's what we're missing. No, stop shooting the trade. Get to the bucket, man. Go to the rack. Put pressure on the on the rim. But we cannot allow no more L's against teams we're supposed to beat.